Abraham Lincoln, the, the, the 16th president of the United States, once said, tell me and I will forget, show me and I, I might remember, but involve me, involve me and I will learn. And this quote embodies the underlying principle of the prototyping methodology, which is based on collaboration, experimentation and demonstration. Prototyping, it is not just for the CSR department, not just for corporate social responsibility people, the marketing department or public affairs. It is a practice that involves all disciplines in making a tangible and visual vision of the future of a company, product or solution. It requires everyone's input. The prototyping canvas is the tool used to put this into practice and it consists of four building blocks. Uh, what if? coalition of the willing, prototyping and celebration. Now, let's take a closer look. Uh, to make this all work, I need some help of you guys. Um, uh, can you shout out three random companies? Some companies that just pop up, pop up into your mind. Unilever. Unilever, Feline, Unilever. Volvo. Volvo, yeah, Volvo cars. And Shell. Okay, yeah, Christian, you, you chose Shell. Well, that's perfect. Can anyone write it on a, on a post-it? So yes, these are all big companies, but that's okay. We have, a, we have a big player in food, a Unilever. We have a big player in automotive, Volvo, and a big one in energy, Shell. Okay, so uh, you defined that we're going to work with Volvo, Unilever, and uh, Shell. Thank you for that. And let's start filling in the what if component. A what if is a vision on the future, a sentence that starts with the words what if. And uh, the best ones are bold, ambitious, wild, maybe a little bit over the top and mind stretching. Let them be provocative. That's how it works the best. They don't claim any prediction of the future. They are rather a mind bending hip hypothesis about the future. That's why they are expressed as questions. Um, so, hey, what would be an interesting what if for Volvo? Think something weird, something crazy. Uh, maybe if you, what if your own car was uh, illegal? Ha, interesting. Ha having your own car is illegal in a city. Very interesting. Thank you for that. Uh, have we something equally, equally crazy for Unilever as well? Um, what if the entire country would be vegan? Wow, that's wishful thinking, but yeah, maybe for animal rights activists at least uh, interesting. And yeah, also think about what we can do with the land that will be free. Interesting, thanks. And is there any possible future for Shell as well? Uh, maybe about uh, what if electricity and fuel would be renewable? Yeah, that's... Uh, renewable? Yeah, that's... A desirable and preferable future for them. Um, okay, that's it. Okay, maybe this went a little bit fast, right? Um, but okay, at the prototyping canvas, there are a few kickstart questions, four of them, and that will help you build a future context that is remarkable, eye opening, but possible, maybe even plausible, probable, and preferable. The best way to get there is by sketching your future exploring context in four steps. Not on this flip chart, but on the prototyping canvas that you can download, there are four of them. Now the best way to get there is by sketching your future exploring context in four steps. First of all, you will have to think of new kits on the block. Make a list of startups and initiatives that challenge the status quo and make a desirable future visible. Secondly, you will have to describe the dominant regime of the status quo. In order to drive a car, for instance, you should own a car, as we have seen before, which is an interesting thought. You should list a set of external forces of change, societal tendencies that put the dominant regime under pressure, and last but not least, you should pick the most critical uncertainties for the future of your industry. And this will help you to formulate a bold what-if question uh, like you guys uh, did. So maybe Christian, can you uh, write on post-its these what-if questions we mentioned uh, before? Uh, 
Okay, why is starting with a future vision so important? First of all, an attractive and a connected vision of the future is so much more stronger than numbers and statistics. It engages people, it inspires people. Secondly, it enriches imagination, stretches our awareness, unlocks possibilities, sparks debate, reframes challenges, and finally, it can empower entire teams to engage for a new endeavor. A third reason, and this is exactly what we need, because being the game changer of an industry, you cannot do on your own. You cannot do it on your own. It needs a coalition of the willing. And building a coalition of the willing will be your next step. Now you have your bold, mind-stretching, disruptive, but preferable, attractive and plausible vision of the future. A coalition of the willing refers to a group a group of companies, a group of individuals, or, or captains of industry even, unified by this desirable and common future vision, and who are dedicated to collaborate, generously share expertise and capabilities to turn this new vision into reality. I'm going to explain how to do it. It's all on the prototyping canvas. Step one. Now it will be key to define the drivers and barriers. What forces will push you forward to make this common purpose happen and what forces will slow you down. Just list them up. Step 2. Usual and unusual suspects. Who else in or outside of our industry will benefit from this future? We have to list that down. Step 3. What are the skills, assets and expertises that are required to make this happen? And step 4. Who else are the people, profiles, institutions and network organizations that we will have to engage and who will be willing to do the efforts necessary to bring this common vision into reality? After filling in these steps, you can easily make your list of organizations and individuals to address. This is how you fabric your own ecosystem, your coalition of the willing. And why is this form formation of coalition of the willing so important as a strategy? Well, first of all, you do, you do this to generously pool expertise and resources to achieve a common purpose more easily. Secondly, you do this to make collaboration in the supply chain more easily. And when it comes to circular economy, it is way easier to turn a supply chain into a supply cycle. This is the ecosystem approach that transforms industries. Three, this is how you create a, a, a unified front to not be the victim of a disruptive storm. This is how you can be the storm. This is how you can become a game-changing force of change in your industry. Four, collaboration in a coalition of the willing builds a lot of credibility in the face of governments and stakeholders. And five, you generate transformative innovation. You have the capability to come up with bold solutions that might not have been possible if each individual company had worked independently. Okay, now you have your attractive vision of the future and your coalition of the willing who embraces this vision. Now it is of vital importance that you define a project and get it out of the meeting room as soon as possible. Making things real is the true rebellion because most projects in sustainability, they die in the meeting room. Now in order to generate focus, trust and commitment. You better make it real as early as possible in your collaboration, in your coalition of the willing. Remember, a prototype is a provocative prototype that explores a challenge or demonstrates a solution by welcoming people to experience it, learn and take action of their own. It is limited in time and space and feasible to set up in a short time. For Volvo, uh, yeah, an interesting prototype could be a pop-up car clubhouse, yeah, where car sharing services packages are shown, experiences with self-driving cars are simulated and sold. Uh, for Unilever, maybe we'll prototype a local brewery, not to brew beer, but produce plant-based meat in bioreactors and demonstrate how it works, how you can finish products inspired by local traditions and individual taste and make people taste the result. 
uh, for Shell we might open a test environment in an old fishing port to show how seaweed is grown, harvested, harvested and processed to biofuels. We could demonstrate how this is combined with aquatic crop cultivation for food, new generations of packaging and, and building materials. We might make it accessible as an underwater picking garden where you can go snorkeling with the entire family and explore what this new generation of energy ecosystems is all about. Um, okay, Christian, I saw that you made post-its to write this um, prototyping ideas down. There you go. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Old fishing ports, uh, car clubhouse and, and, and local brewery the five success factors of prototyping successful prototyping comes with something radically new but provides some familiar elements that help audiences to relate designing a prototype is designing an experience so redefine what bold vision you want to share define what interaction you are pursuing what kind of learnings you want to gather and so on what kind of interaction is desired a third element a prototype makes a project real. If you manage to set up quickly, your staff and stakeholders will be amazed by the sense of reality and the ambition to be very serious about it. And fourth, a prototype generates a sense of ownership. As soon as it is real, as soon as it works, as soon as people start to interact with the prototype, many people will feel a sense of pride, stand in the spotlights and will behave as the ambassadors of your project. Prototypes generate curiosity. People will ask a lot of questions, share advice, feel engaged, and this is exactly the effect you aspire. It is this upward swirl of attention that you reach more people with. Grow a community and collect more learnings in order to make the right decisions when upscaling your project. Last one, celebration. Every day in our daily practice, we experience that entrepreneurs do hesitate to communicate about their sustainability efforts. As sustainability is never perfect, they want to avoid accusation of greenwashing. We marketeers are trained to communicate smoke screens of perfection. But when it comes to sustainability, the communication agenda is the complete opposite. We must learn how to express vulnerability we must admit that sustainability is not easy, but difficult, never perfect. That we are imperfect, but open to collaborate to make the next steps. This is the only true, authentic and long-term communication strategy when it comes to sustainability that we have seen practicing by sustainable brand icons like Patagonia, Tony Chocolonely and Fairphone. Our common future desperately needs narratives of bloom rather than doom. Perspectives of hope are way more engaging than negative news. That's why we have to generously share and shine the light on what works rather than on what is not working. Find a way to celebrate every step forward no matter how big or small. Because when we celebrate something, it feels like a party. And parties attract people. Everybody wants to be part of success. So, in order to do so, we have to answer four questions to define your celebration strategy. First, what community do we want to engage with our prototype and what interaction do we want to evoke? A second, a prototype is an intervention. It is a design performance. So, what is the best setting or context to locate our prototype? And when having interaction with people, how does it generate content? And how do we reach more people with it? How does it build a following? How does it generate opt-ins, maybe even leads? And last but not least, what materials, skills, people, budget, space and time is necessary to build our prototype? How to make it happen? And how to make it happen rapidly? Now that was it. During this micro course, you got familiar with the prototyping methodology. Prototyping is about turning sustainability ambitions into reality in iterative steps. That's uh, what it is all about. It is a way to take control over your own future narrative. Not by telling, not by yelling, not by selling, but through action. 
leadership by example. That's the ultimate story. So prototyping is not storytelling as we know it. it. It is more story supplying. You craft something new, something unusual, something provocative but relevant and hopeful in order to make others share and celebrate it. A good storyteller tells a good story. A great storyteller makes many people find their space in your story. That's what prototyping is about. My name was Stefan van Dist. Thank you so much to watch my micro course. Please pay a visit to the other experts at We Are Impact Collective as well. I hope this micro course was valuable to you and triggers you start practicing yourself. Please feel free to download the prototyping canvas here. Wish you all the best and don't hesitate to contact me if you need help. You'll find my details um, right here in the movie. And I thank you for your attention.